Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and this is Flynn Sisters Home. And in today's video, I'll be showing you how I created this beautiful garland for my mantle, as well as a matching piece for my banister. Now, last week we did a video about how to create an outdoor wreath and garland set. And a lot of those techniques that we went over in that video will show up in this video as well. So this video will be more of like an inspiration type video. And if you haven't watched last week's, go check it out. It was a great video, lots of great information in there. But I absolutely love how these turned out. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I construct the garland and how I attach it to my mantle and my banister. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. Get started there's three things we want to consider before purchasing our garland one is we want to match the greenery with our tree in the space i have a flock tree so i needed flocked garland next we want to measure to figure out the length most garland comes in six foot increments so i just need to determine how many that i'll need also accounting for any overhang i might want I also want to think about the decor style and all the picks, ornaments, and ribbons should match the same stuff that I'm going to be putting in my tree. For my mantle, I need two six-foot sections, so I'm going to attach them both at the top of each garland by wrapping one branch from each garland together. So I'm almost like tying a couple of the branches from the top of each garland, almost in a knot, just wrapping them together. And this is going to hold them together really securely. So I should end up with 12 feet of garland. That's more than enough to cover my mantle. To hang my garland, I'm going to be using five pound command hooks. They're just like really heavy command hooks. And I'm going to be mounting these facing upwards. So I'm going to be like attaching them flat against the top of my mantle. I'm gonna do one in the true center and then two on either side. I got the command hooks attached to the top of my mantle. I used a branch from the garland to just wrap around the hook and that held it in place really securely. a matter of fluffing out our garland and straightening all the branches and making sure it's even on both sides. Once I'm done with that, I'm ready to add my lights. I'm using 100 light strands. These are called LED Euro cluster lights. I got them at Hobby Lobby. I ended up using two 100 light strands. And the way that we're going to attach these to the garland is I'm going to wrap the plug-in for the lights as well as where I plugged it into my white extension cord. I'm just gonna wrap some branches around the back to attach it, okay? These branches are all wired, which make it really easy to just attach things straight to the garland itself. Once I've got that attached and secure, I'm going to just kind of scatter my lights throughout the garland and using the branches to kind of wrap around the strand to attach them. I recommend kind of laying out your lights against your garland before attaching them to see that your end point for the garland won't end up with a bunch of like excess at the end. In other words, you want to be able to evenly distribute both strands of lights so that there aren't leftovers at the bottom of either side. All the lights should evenly go throughout the whole garland. It's really annoying when you've attached half your strand and realize that one, either you don't have enough or two, they're not gonna be evenly distributed so that your second strand has a bunch left over and then you have to backtrack and rearrange them all. So I kinda like to do a rough draft first before I commit to where and how I wanna attach the lights to the garland. I almost recommend starting in the middle of your garland where the two strands attach at their plugins and then distribute them, distributing them throughout either side of the garland that way, just so you know that everything is evenly placed and you don't have excess hanging down from either side. I 
All right, once I got my lights attached, I'm ready to start adding the decorative elements to my garland. These are little poinsettia picks that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're like a sage velvet, and I thought they would look really pretty. I ended up not using these, but anyway, before you actually attach your picks and ornaments to your garland, you kind of want to do a rough draft and lay them out to make sure everything's evenly spaced. And if you want to move anything around or you change your mind on something, at any rate, I recommend getting two different size ornament bulbs or like round bulb picks. I also recommend getting one or two size ribbons all in one color and then maybe like an extra kind of floral or greenery pick and or garland that you can cut up and add into the wreath. You're going to see what I mean by that later. Also keeping in mind that we want to carry the theme of our garland through our tree. So just having a couple of those elements like the same ribbon or like the same colored ornaments and things are really what's going to carry the theme for us. I have everything placed kind of how I want it. These picks are really easy to put into the garland. You're just going to kind of shove the pick in and then wrap the stem of the pick around the base of your garland. I recommend not doing this until you're absolutely sure where you want to place everything. If you're going to be adding ornaments, then you would just use a length of floral wire through the ornament like loop at the top and then attach that to the base of your garland. Same thing with these floral picks. I just shove them in there and then wrap the wire from the pick around the base. And so for my ribbon, I'm just going to take a 12 inch section of ribbon, cut at a diagonal on either end, fold it in half, and then use a length of floral wire to twist it around the back to secure. And then we'll use the remaining length of floral wire there to attach it to the base of our garland or closer to the base on one of the branches, anywhere we need to add a little extra detail. This is such a simple way to do your ribbon, but it adds such a beautiful impact. I needed way more ribbon than I purchased for this project. I used a whole roll of one and a half inch ribbon on this six, uh, 12 foot length of garland. Um, and I didn't have enough to do my tree, so I had to improvise, whatever. Anyway, I also ended up taking out those poinsettia picks that I put in earlier, and I'm replacing them with pieces of this mistletoe garland that I just cut into little sections with some wire cutters and just sort of shoved them into spaces on my garland that just needed some extra detail. And here's just kind of an extra little close-up of how the garland is attached to my mantle. You'll see the five command hooks there. There's three heavy-duty ones and then two of the smaller ones in between. Okay, and that was plenty to keep this nice and supported. And then to attach my stockings, instead of using more command hooks, I use these no-damage U-shaped hooks that I found from Target that have like a rubberized inside of the U-hook that just kind of hangs on the mantle in some sort of way. I don't know, but they work really well. <laughs> For my banister, I used two lengths of the six foot garland, same garland, okay? So I ended up buying four of these garlands in total. I got these at Michael's. And to attach them to my banister, I just wrapped pieces of those branches around the thicker part of my banister and then I also did a couple points along the railing of the banister just to keep it extra secure and supported. Cutting about three feet off of my second piece of garland and I'm going to use that little excess to make some matching center pieces which I'll show you in a video next week. Those turned out so super cute. And after I got this attached to my banister, I literally decorated it in the same way as I showed you guys on how I did the mantle garland. So I'm not going to go through that whole process again. The main thing that I did differently with the banister was I used large bows at all three of the posts of my banister using a four inch wired ribbon instead of the one and a half inch ribbon 
that I used on the garland on the mantle. And I also used battery pack twinkle lights from Hobby Lobby. I used two of their 20 light strands for the banister garland. And I absolutely love these battery pack lights because they come on at the same time every night and turn off about five or six hours later. Like clockwork, absolutely love it. So this is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I am so obsessed with how this turned out in my tree. It took me a long time to put together, but I have to say this is probably one of my favorite decor themes that I've done for Christmas so far. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And you guys, if you like this video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss our next video. I think that'll come out next Monday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.